Yes, now this is live. So we are live, people. Hello. This is the third darker hangout we have. And we got two amazing people here, and one amazing person next to me is, is in the light. He's a fairy. Uh, so we got two nice American guys. America loves us. So um, it, it's uh, James or Nim. Anonymous, um, who lives in the city of Missouri at the moment, and we got Greg, who is in Orlando, Florida. Uh, Mojikas, both of them, and uh, we're here to share our um, experiences and our tactics. Oh, Sandra, you want to get, get in the, yeah. the whole screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And shut. Hello, everybody. We got Alessandro Pali, who is from uh, Bologna, Italy. And he made us cough. <laughs> that little thing has on me it's the magic filter in him. All right. So, so yeah. So to the topic is about how we how we test our ideas, how we have the ideas we have and our musical concepts, whether it's a melody or a project, how we get feedback, and how we make things work for us, how we get information whether this that we could pursue or not. The um, reason I picked this topic um, it's because the essay actually to be about this this subject. Um, this month I decided what is missing from the whole portfolio of, of knowledge I'm putting together and reached uh, with your help. Um, it was it's a lean startup how you actually create a this um, and you start thinking as a startup, the idea is experimenting early and fast and with little expense and how you see what works and what doesn't so then you can put it together and invest more time on it probably and put it and take it to the next level. So this this was that has not been documented so far. I haven't seen, if you type lean startup missions, there's nothing out there. There's no way for musicians to understand how element. Uh, and I think it's a very valuable topic for a modern music preneur to, to understand itself practically, not just theoretically. Theoretically, you can read about the Lean Startup in terms of startup, but practically, what do musicians need to do, right? So this is something I've had quite a lot of experience myself, and, and Alessandro as well. He really liked mentoring a lot. Uh, we're in the same mindset, and I was curious, what what is the experience of, of of you guys, what are the two cents you have to offer? So first of all, let's let's start by getting your take things because now this is this is recorded. Uh, the way to do it is if we unmute one person and this person shares their opinion and their names, and then we mute that person. I'm muting the other. One. It goes like this, like a circle. So we've got one viewer. This person that at the moment sees us, but they have access, and probably they want to be invited. I've sent you guys invites. So if this person who is there, if he or she can, uh, can send, can, uh, how can you um, yeah. participate, just write on the page. Of, of the just write something that hey, I'm here, I'm viewing, participate, so I can send you an invitation. Anyway, so I'm, I'm going to unmute Greg, who is a musician and is running a blog as well about um, strategies. Oh, yeah, Greg, can you unmute yourself? Tell us, first of all, what, um, what, what is, first of all, you on, on sharing things? Uh, in the past, you know, musicians used to put everything together um, as a final product and then you know the public used to be saying like okay this is it this is all you need to have but now we see a lot of musicians more musicians experimenting and sharing the creative process what is your opinion on this do you think the musician benefit from sharing the creative process and, and asking for feedback or this is something that you've done and this is only for companies tech that give solutions well, I definitely think that it's extremely viable for musicians to do it, and I think it's even more powerful for musicians to do it because music's much more of an emotional connection 
than a product has. So when people feel like they have a part of the creative process, they have more of an emotional connection and involvement to it and a sense of belonging. So um, I think that they're more likely to want to share it and promote it even once the song is uh, finished and as it's finished because they feel like they, they helped write it. So one of the things we did is we surveyed um, our Facebook following on and asked them questions about the topics that we were thinking about writing songs about and we asked them what they thought of it and what it meant to them and we actually used their their terminology and some of the feedback that we got from them and included it in the song. Um, that's one of the things we did. Uh, another thing that we did is we used a service online called AudioKite. And what it is is a feedback service and a, and a polling service. And you submit your, your audio tracks. And then people comment and leave, uh, uh, leave their thoughts on it and rate the song. So you get a lot of uh, valuable feedback from complete strangers about what they initially their initial take on the song is. And you can kind of reiterate based on that. And another thing that we did was... We actually did a YouTube series of writing a song, and we were asking the uh, for feedback from the audience as we were writing the song, and the videos progressed through a series. And so we we got feedback in real time like that. That was th those were some of the the three things that I think that we have done. Um, but I, to answer your question, Tommy, yeah, absolutely. I think it's more viable for, for an artist and a musician to do it than for a company. I just think it hasn't been done yet effectively and consistently. So, yeah. Right. So in terms of, you said uh, you, you've done, a, you did this uh, video on YouTube. How did this go? I mean, what's the difference between a series of videos and, and sharing the song with the community and asking for feedback on individual songs? Is it, um, is it the any different? The, the, the first video was basically how you would you, you would write a song in real life. You would start, uh, obviously different artists had different approaches, but the way that these guys, the way that we did it was they just started jamming, and they basically said at the initial part of the video what, was gonna, what, the, what the stream, what the series was going to be about. And they said, we're just going to jam. We have no clue what's going to happen. So it was this, they jammed, they recorded it. They, they said what was going on. And then the next video, they got cleaned up. One video was, was recording vocals. One video was, excuse me, writing vocals. One, one video was, was writing guitar and, and, and tweaking that. And um, it was really cool because by the fourth or fifth video, the song was really was really sounded was quite good. So um, it was basically just a recording and a video series of the writing process. Only the writing process had the involvement of the audience. All right. Um, so so I've, I've, I've written the jamming. A consistent series of video and um, and um, it's it's sharing the process. Um, this is quite interesting. What what I'm thinking about is, can these be combined with with having some ready-made songs? You know, like could this be an experiment something that that all right? This song is going to be done collaboratively. Right, it's going to be us and you all together. Uh, the, the whole album can be written this way, or do you think only a few tracks could be written? Because otherwise, if you write a whole album collectively, then you're not the author, author of, of the ideas, and you're just sharing things and kind of um, remixing other people's ideas. What do you think? What's your take on that? And then I and think the question goes to to James. So after Greg, uh, think about the same question and, and give us an answer. Um, I think that ultimately the artist would decide what to pursue and what not to pursue, and it would they would be the ultimate filter. And I think that the audience would 
would trust them to to make it work. Um, but I definitely think that as far as reiteration, asking the audience for genuine feedback and getting the consensus of the feel of, of, of what's going on. Um, I think that ultimately the artist is, is, is the writer. And they ha would have to look at is their responsibility and, and, and the audience. I think that the audience ultimately would, would know that and understand that. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question or not, but just off the top of, well, top well, of my head. I down, I mean, we can, we can discuss this. Um, I'm totally, gonna, yeah. I'm going to hear James's opinion and um, Alessandro's as well. But the, the words, the two words that I wrote down from what you told me is that the artist, in a way, becomes the artistic director. You know, the final decision maker and not right. the composer. Because we get ideas from, from different places anyway. You know, I'm walking down the street and I hear somebody humming a melody. I'm like, wow, this melody is amazing. You know, and then you take it and right. you write it down. It's not your idea. It's not, it's not coming out of nowhere. We get the idea from different places anyway. But if there is a like a mastermind group of fans and the artists, you know, there is the, the decision making process, the ideas, the brainstorming session becomes faster. And eventually, yes, like I believe you're right when you say that the, the final decision is made by the artist because they connect things and they have the big vision in mind. Now they do collect information from different sources, which can be done, you know, in the way that you project it, the three different ways you project it. And then they make the final right. decision. They connect these things and they present it as a final product. Um, right. James, right, I'm going to mute you now, Greg. Thanks for that. Uh, James, can you un unmute yourself and um, let us know what, what your opinion is? Um, well, I think it's a really, really interesting idea. Um, basically, what it sounds like to me is that you're offering yourself as kind of uh, a medium for your audience to to channel their ideas through um, and yeah you get to do the, the filtering the selecting and you also um, have the skills to you know manifest these ideas um, and you're kind of offering yourself a, as a tool to the audience and that's really cool because a lot of the people in the audience they don't have the means or the skills to to put to, to manifest the art that's in their heads um, and it's really cool to, for them to be able to collaborate with an artist and have those ideas you know, come to life for them, and to make it an interactive process like that um, makes it more intimate for them. And also, I think they totally recognize you as the author, you as the person with the skills, you as the director, and also someone they're they're using as a tool or paying for a service. Um, and not just an entertainer, not just a tool either, but as uh, someone who, who is genuinely interested in their ideas and someone who's offering their skills to bring an idea to life. I love that. That's great articulation, actually. Um, I've, I've, what I've written down is that, um, in a way, the artist becomes, and for me, they always wear um, the medium to channel ideas, you know, different vari variety of ideas. Now, if it comes from a specific audience, you know, it's like still the same thing, but it's more focused, more well organized. And uh, in a way, you know, we always filter ideas from different sources. I think that there's, it's, it's, uh, getting feedback, consistent feedback from your audience is like organizing better what has been, how, what was being done throughout the years because it was happening anyway. You know, like we're seeing information, filtering it, making up the decision whether this should be part of, a, of an artistic concept or not. And then I also wrote down that now the audience can be more actively particip um, participating in the process, and and it, all these modern tools they give a voice to the audience who don't who have ideas but they don't have necessarily the tools to make things happen. Um, I really love this. I, re I really love this. And um, 
And by the way, at the end of the of the whole um, discussion, I'm going to share the links of your music, uh, both of you uh, guys and your work, so we can all see, you know, what you what you're doing and what's behind this this mind you know, that is being expressed at the moment. Um, okay, so I'm going to meet you now, uh, James. Thank you, um, Alessandro. Yeah. So, um, yeah, can let's go for your, yeah. your take on the subject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what the guy said is very interesting because, um, well, first of all, let me let me tell you what my background is. I'm a musician, and but I'm also a software engineer, so I'm I'm really massively interested to, you know, to this topic, how to expose ideas and get feedback and. The whole lean startup movement is something that I experience uh, professionally in my in my everyday job, which is you know developing software for music technology, and uh, and I can see how this uh, you know in ten years has changed completely the way software products are developed. Um, so it has a tangible effect on you know on the economy of software, and you know a disruptive effect now. So the old way of making software, I can't, I can't say it's gone. But it, it, it is going, you know. So what I'm looking for is, is an equivalent in music. And what is ex extremely exciting, I think, is that we are just at the beginning. Because if we, uh, I mean, the fact that people like you guys, you know, musicians, have these radical ideas of uh, delivering, you know, your your songs, your artistic, uh, uh, you know, ideas up front to, to the to the audience to see what I think is great. Uh, the only thing is that um, labels don't get it yet, you know, uh, or sometimes even the market, even the the, um, the customers, the audience themselves don't get it. So why are you releasing a song that is unfinished? Why don't you finish it? You know, why can't you finish it? Which is exactly what people were pointing out, you know, software customers, you know, customers that were buying software were pointing out to, to companies, why don't you just finish the software? And the point, the whole point was in software that, well, I don't know what you want because you can't tell me. You know, or you think you know, but once the, my product is delivered, you, you realize that is not what you want. And that's the whole point of the lean startup, trying to discover the features that, that the product has to have in order to be, you know, in order to improve the user experience, in order to be successful, because it fulfills the needs of the customers. So if we if we move this to music, and I, what it is very interesting what you guys said, because. I really like this sentence, you know, music is more than, uh, you know, a product, it's an emotional connection, and that's the point, you know, if you want, it's th it can be still a product, but it has to create emotional connection, so how can I create emotional connection if I'm just a broadcaster, if I just send music out? Of course, this way of, uh, of um, this way of working worked very well so far, I believe, because there were really few people making music, and if we were still in a you know explore, you know exploratory phase of, of music making, you know we came from classical music and then rock and jazz and you know now I think we saturated everything. Everything is possible now, like in software, everything is possible. But so the point is not anymore making software, making music is what should I make? And that's when I think um, you know the the audience can be the generator of the ideas or somehow. You know, a driving force, and the artist needs to be the moderator. So I think both of you expressed exactly what you know what the core principle should be, and what the core principle of a lean uh, music production movement should be. What I'm interested in, interested to really is how we can make this viable viable business. So how can we make it so disruptive? So then you know it becomes the way to make music, which is what is happening now in software. You know, applications like well, Facebook, WhatsApp are just few examples, you know, Uber and stuff like that are just few examples of how services, not just software, services like taxi, <laughs> taxi, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that can be disrupted by, by this way of working, Groupon, you know, things like that. Um, in, in my personal experience, now I go back to the, mus you know, musician side of things, I found it a bit difficult, although I want to try it and it's one of my, you know, key points for my music production activity. I find it difficult because uh, the label, my label, doesn't get it yet. They, they still, although they are in the indie label and they are quite uh, innovative and creative, they still think it should be a finished product. And then on top of it, you build other things. So you can build maybe the video making, you know, so you can steer that. You can, uh, you can create remixes or you can create a different version of that song based on what the audience, audience think. Or you can let people remix it. 
So that's how far they go, but they don't really conceive yet as viable, you know, the, the idea of, okay, let's write a song together with the audience, or let's, uh, let's uh, unveil, you know, all the steps of, you know, the production phase. So, so that's my personal experience. I think it, there's still a lot of work to do, but it's uh, an exciting, you know, an exciting uh, idea. It's, um, what, what, what do you, what you just said that um, I think this is the question to be answered for most mm. people. Um, Alessandro said, um, I'm, I'm reading, uh, yeah. why are you releasing a song that is unfinished? You know, the same thing goes for why are you releasing a service that is unfinished? Yeah. Why are you releasing a product that is unfinished? Um, and and this, is, this is why most people have objection, I think, in music today. Yeah. It, it's about, like, why are you releasing something that is not finished? Um, this reminds me of something that I think is one of the biggest disadvantages for musicians in general. Being a perfectionist. Uh, feeling yeah. that it needs to be perfect from every aspect so it has to be released. Otherwise, it's not something to be released. And, and I, can, I, can, I can have the same feeling. I'm never ready to release music. I always think there is something missing, just because... Sometimes it's true. I mean, sometimes it's true. However, the, the question is, how true is it? You know, what's the point? Um, if, in general, if we believe that we need to have a finished product, you know, a perfect product, uh, and it, it has to create emotional connections, as Greg, Greg said very correctly, yeah. um, it's, then it's all about us, how we feel inside of us, and we will never feel perfect. There is always going to be something missing, and we will always feel that this connection is not going to happen. However, people surprise us all the time. They get connected with a little riff. They get connected with a part of the lyrics. They get connected with something that we don't know. So many times, I've written a song. Um, I'm like, okay, these songs should not be recorded at all. <laughs> and then when I perform it live, people love like it. it. You yeah. know, like people applause a lot because they connected with this for some reason, which I couldn't comprehend. So I think this is why it's very important to, fight, to actually get feedback. You might realize that, yes, if you're trying to be artistic, you know, art for art's sake, like express what you believe, but on the same time you are, you're trying to be commercial and appeal to a lot of people because you want to make change with your music to bring change. How do you know what appeals to these people? So I think there should be like a balance between what you want and what the audience wants so this connection can happen. And, and also, as part of my essay, I'm going to shut up afterwards so you guys can talk. Uh, in my essay, I, I write this down. That, um, I think um, it was um, who, one of you guys uh, said that it, it, it brings, it involves people when, when you share the creative process. It makes them feel that their own part of the experience. Yeah. I think this is it by sharing something with, with your audience, you create, you, you, you show that there is a vision, there is a direction, and these people embrace it, and they become part of it, and in a way you polarize the audience towards a specific direction, because you are the final decision maker, the artist is the person with the vision, they make up their mind, but they collect data from the audience, and this audience gets this, you know, in their heart, and, and they get polarized towards a specific vision. So in a way, it becomes interactive, and these people want to follow and see what, what's happening, and they, they hold it dear, you know, to, that, to, to their heart. Um, so I think, like, in, in my opinion, this how interpret the whole process of feedback and, and why it's valuable. Now, um, any, any comments, guys? Just, just raise your hand so I can see, so you can unmute yourselves. Any comments or that? Any additional comments on this very uh, subject? Yes, James, can you um, unmute yourself? There we go. Um, yeah, um, you're right about the audience surprising you. Um, I, I have a song in particular that I was, I, I never felt ready to release it. Um, it was, you know, I'd been working on it for months and months, and um, I just couldn't seem to get it right. And then I was kind of having a lull between projects, and um, I wanted, you know, to keep my audience interested, to offer them something. So I was like, 
okay, I'll let them hear this, you know, piece of crap that I can never get right and, you know, um, as just something to keep them interested. So, you know, I, I put this song out on SoundCloud and they, my, my audience loved it. Like, they, I got this really surprising reaction to it. Um, so then... I kept on putting like different versions of this same song on all of my releases and um, I'm the kind of artist that like releases like I don't know two or three EPs a month you know um, and I'll, I'll often recycle songs I'll just like you know um, create different playlists of my music or different versions of different songs for people to hear um, and so um, eventually I had six versions of this same song, um, six different versions, and I put it together, um, I put them together on a collection um, when I was experiencing another lull, and that's actually one of my most popular, most downloaded releases. Is the is the collection of this one song that I had never felt ready to release? People love you know to these different versions. They love hearing a different version depending on how they feel. Um, you know, it it's just it it's something that they really really connected with that really surprised me, and so um, and. and it's more than just this one song. I've been finding that with a lot of my music, which is why you'll find a lot of different versions of my songs on on different records, you know. Um, and um, people just respond to the different versions differently. And even when I feel they're not perfect, sometimes people like to go back to that not perfect version that I had released earlier. Um, because they they have a special connection to it for some reason. Okay, it, it, it's very interesting to, to see that um, sometimes like this is a very interesting approach. You, you're not sure about which version of the song will appeal to whom, so you just release the whole package. Like, hey, this is a song in, in six different versions. You know, I was not I was indecisive on what to release. So I'm releasing everything. Take it. <laughs> okay. yeah. I, think it's, I think it's brilliant and it's quite. Quite well, fresh, I actually it? get um, kind of irritated with myself with that approach because of the perfectionist side mm. of, of being an artist and, you know, not feeling like these songs are, are ready to be released. And I get irritated with, you know, feeling like it's not ready, but I released it anyway because I wanted to just put something out there or I was really anxious for people to hear it and give me feedback. Um, but it's something that the audience has seemed to really connect with and seems to really like, um, even though it irritates the hell out of me. <laughs> yeah, sometimes about letting go on your own ego and, and trying something. Uh, thank you, uh, James Nim. I'll call you Nim. I think it's shorter and it's <laughs> better. Um, so now we'll, let's go to Greg again. Um, I would like to ask you something uh, in terms of, so now we're talking about not just trying to get feedback from different sources and from different angles and different um, directions, but we're trying to get well-organized feedback. Um, I have some tips to share, but I would like to hear you guys first. Um, you, you've got feedback in, in, in from different projects, you know, whether it's a musical project or your own blog or your, your other projects. What has worked really great for you in terms of getting well-organized feedback and, and, and consistent feedback and then analyzing the data you got? What is your experience? Um, well, like I said in the beginning, we did a service called, uh, we used a service called AudioKite, AudioKite.com. Um, A-U-D-I-O-K-I-T-E and we uploaded our song and you can pay for different amounts of people to to survey, survey them and ask them questions what they think about it. They rate it from like 1 to 10 different type criteria and if, oh remind me after Tommy, I could, I could email you the PDF if you'd like to see it. I'd be yeah. more than happy to do that. Um, 
So you get an you get a percentage and an overall score of how they rated the song, and it's based on like things like gender and interests, age, things like that. That was one of the things that was really good to have data as far as how your music connects with a certain demographic, certain age group, certain gender. And then because when you ask people that you know, oftentimes they'll tell you what they want, that what they think you want to hear. So it won't be truly objective feedback, I found. So asking a bunch of strangers who don't give a crap who you are and have no clue will be a lot more objective and honest, which is what you want. You want honesty. You don't want somebody to tell you what they think you want to hear. You want genuine critique so that you can improve and make it better. So um, Audio Kite was a lot better for that. But um, as far as asking people, our fans, what they thought, we Facebook. We used Facebook and just asked the same quest, the same four or five questions to um, as many people as would answer it. And I actually have those responses, too. So I could forward those to you if you'd like via email afterwards. Just, just remind me. And I'd be more than happy to share that with you. So, yeah, that's what we did. And the, the, the feedback was pretty good. And um, the data was consistent. So um, it, it's very interesting. It's something that I I didn't think about. Um, I've already completed the essay, so it's different methodology that I've included. But it never occurred to me mm. that yes, I thought I thought I, I saw it once. You know, there is a website where you can go and get credits. You know, and you pay, and then you get reviews from people that don't know you, um, and it's quite objective. Uh, and this way, you can see whether you're going to hit or not and what people think. Uh, so that I will definitely include this, and thank you, uh, Greg. Yeah, definitely, if you can write it down in case I forget. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, send me the link and also send me the other feedback that you got. And That's going to be great. Absolutely. Um, that, that, is, that is lovely, actually, because you get consistent feedback yeah. and objective feedback. Yeah. But that's very important because going back again to the Lean Startup and you know, how these things work in software, one of the key points of the Lean Startup you know, methodology is to, to, is to get feedback, to, to measure objectively you know, the effectiveness of your proposal. You know, whether it's a, a software, whether it's a new feature in your software or a song, is the same thing, I believe. You need to be able to measure. And, and more important than you know, measuring, you need to know what you want to measure. So you need, you need to know what you want to assess. And like, and, and like you said, if you ask your friends or you, you, know, you just get what you want to hear, whereas if you ask users or potential users, you know, to try to listen to your music and can you, can, do you feel connected? What do you think of that? It's much better. And the fact that pulling from different sources like Facebook, which is closer to your real audience, and, you know, uh, Audio K, which is you know, potential users, it's interesting if they correlate and, and, they, they, and you get the same results, that's a very good indication that your strategy or your, your, your work, your message is, is going across. And, and that's, right. that's great. I think, um, again, in software, this is how everything works. It's based on analytics, so it's easier because you can even track what the user does. You can't really be there and monitor what the user feels when he's listening to your song, but at least you can ask. And that's, right. that's a good starting point, I think, starting to ask people what they think. Right. It's, a, it's a great. That's a, uh, so it's, it's very nice to see that you, know, you guys are trying something out like this, and I, it's something I always wanted to do personally, and I definitely want to do it and probably uh, try to share my experience. The, the only thing that I would like to add to it is it's, it's difficult to do that as, as an artist. It's difficult. I, it's extremely difficult to overcome that, that resistance to, to feel like, I don't want to say secure with yourself enough, but mm. it's difficult to put yourself out there and it's just it's just difficult to do that without wanting to feel defensive. Yeah. So I think it's imp you know what I mean because you t instead of taking it as feedback, you'll take it as criticism. So you have to be really secure about yourself and who you are, and look at it for what it is, which is feedback from people who you want to impact with your music. You know. So. Absolutely. Um, it's. 
it's great. Uh, thank you, Greg. I will come back to you. I'm going to mute you now. Um, I'll hear, I'll hear J, uh, Nim's uh, opinion about this as well. I just want to add, like, you reminded me of something that I've included in the essay, is that you want to get information, so you're looking for the no. You're not looking for the reaffirmation of what you already believe. You're not looking for something that will make you feel good. As, as Greg said, uh, it, it's all reducing your ego and looking for something that will be of constructive criticism. Yeah. So you're looking for information that will give you a new aspect of what you've just created. You know, because if you don't start by getting feedback on, on some ghost, you have created something, you know, that can be an initial melody, a, a demo song, something that you've created. You know, that's a starting point. I want to receive the objection that this is not good because of this. So you want also the explanation, not just a Tinder kind of uh, swipe out, you know, like, okay, yes, I don't no. like it. No, you want to know why. What is the, the element that made you feel that this is not good enough? You know, and what do you suggest? So I think it's all about that. Getting the no, because no gives you information, yes, reaffirms what you already believe, and this is what you get from your family. They love everything you do because they want to support you. But then... You want to get the no and then get the why. Why didn't you like it? What can I make better? And then you have a full portfolio of information. Um, okay, uh, Nim, can you unmute yourself and, and tell us what has worked for you in terms of feedback? Well, unfortunately, I haven't, I haven't got much feedback in, in the form of comments or written word. Um, that's something that the audience that I've encountered seems rather resistant to. So all I have to go by are, are numbers. Um, and, you know, it's the amount of blog views, the amount of plays, the amount of likes, um, the amount of plus ones, you know, that's all I have to to go by, really. And I wish I had more feedback of, um, you know, I didn't like this about this. You know, I, I I tell my audience, you know, I I'm an adult. I can take it. I want, you know, constructive criticism. I'm not going to get all defensive and cry about it. But, you know, Most of the time. Um, but, well, yeah, I'll, I'll cry about it in private. Um, so, uh, but unfortunately, I, I, don't, I don't hear that kind of feedback, so I just have to kind of guess and go by the numbers, and um, sometimes the numbers will really surprise me, and sometimes, um, you know, I'll look at a person's profile who likes my music and be like really you <laughs> you like my music okay hey that's cool whatever um, you know didn't expect that um, and you know I, I get a lot of surprises some some likes and views from the most unlikely sources but that's really that's really all I have to go by unfortunately um, but people seem to really, but what my numbers have been telling me is that people seem to really enjoy um, when I'm the most, when I'm the most communicative with them. Um, you know, when, when I take them through the process with me um, in my blogging articles and um, they, they, seem to, you know, to to value that almost more than the songs themselves. They seem to be entertained by experiencing the process with me and, you know, experiencing when I feel like I'm creating, like, sh when I feel like I'm creating shit, they want to read about it. Um, and, you know, it, it's that I'm totally honest with them that they seem to really appreciate, and that seems to gather me an audience on my blog anyway. Okay. It, it's interesting that you're... Okay, thank you, uh, Nim. I'll, I'll you, you know. Um, it's, it's really interesting that, that numbers is also feedback, you know. Numbers is an indicator. At least it shows you the direction. 
Um, it's it's important as well, though, to, to to see why this is happening. You know, you want to get answers, I guess, uh, on why this there is some kind of appreciation on a specific track that you didn't expect. So this can be tackled in a very easy way. You just reach out to certain people that you're closer with. And then you ask them a few questions, like a couple of questions. Like, why did you like this song? I saw that you wrote a comment on this song. I saw that you responded to this one. Uh, why did you do that? Um, so, yes, having analytics and having metrics, like this is what I wrote down. Uh, numbers, metrics, yeah. like clicks and uh, plus ones and likes is a form of feedback, but it just gives you an indication of what people like. Now, you want personalized feedback. You want something more specific, more concrete. You know, especially put into words by the audience itself, because this way you can use it as a testimonial, and you can see what they use, what words they use, so you can use these words for your own music. You know, the best way to describe your product, your artistic yeah. product, is through the words yeah. of your audience, because you have something in mind. But if you merge it with the the words that the audience uses, this way you can get more easily sentimentally attached to it with them and you can take them on a journey e more easily because this is the way they express themselves. And I think it's, it's we got rid of the era where it's just our own expression. Now it's like a co-expression of the audience and yourself, and you are the person moderating everything. You use the word moderator. Yeah. Uh, I said artistic director. It's, it's more or less yeah. the same. You know, just about making the final decision and being open, being uh, transparent that this was always happening. You know, there is no artistic idea coming out of nowhere. There was always like a remix of an existing idea or a connection of existing ideas. Right now, we're just admitting this, that, hey, this is how we're doing this. This is how we've been, we've been doing this for, for all the previous years. Now, we're just about more transparent. Let's do it together. You know, and then you connect people towards specific vision. Any, any comment on that, Alessandro? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, going back to... The importance of numbers, but also the importance of uh, you know personal endorsements. I think for my experience is that in high quality products, it's 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 yeah numbers are more important because they they, they correlate from from you know from the, um, so sometimes when you what I'm trying to say is that sometimes when you ask to, to specific people you get good comments, but that's just one person. So you really need to average these up, you know, on loads of them to have a clear indication of what's going on, you know, to have a confirmation of that your music is good or... But, but sometimes for high quality products it's more, even more important to have these sort of endorsements which are kind of statements and they replace your marketing sometimes. You don't need to do any marketing, you just need to show people what the other people think. And again, it brings back the emotional connection which is very important. People feel proud of themselves because they, they, ha they have to you know, they could say something about your music, and you you and you let other people see that. So it's it's very important, I think. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, something um, something that we tried. I mean, you you're gonna read, you know, in a few uh, days before the end of the month, you're gonna see the essay. Actually, I was I was thinking about writing this essay on feedback through your own feedback. So I'm going to publish uh, online. Uh, the the version that is final for me, um, and and I will give you access to it. So you will have like ten days ahead of you to read it. You know, it's pretty short. It's not that extensive. And write your own comments in the margins. And I will take these comments, you know, and and make them part of the creative process and uh, include them in the essay. I think it's a very nice way to launch an essay about feedback yeah, well, by getting feedback. Um, it's the way. <laughs> but 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 during that uh, time while I was writing it. Uh, actually, another patron, Yossi Sassi, uh, this great man that has been full-time musician for 23 years. Uh, he's from Israel, and he has headlined in all the big festivals, you know, metal festivals. He has performed, you know, with Metallica and all the big bands. Um, and uh, now he is doing a solo career. And basically, he uh, said, all right, let's document the creative process of uh, my next album. So we created a patron page together. And in order to find out what the play, what the different kinds of rewards are going to be? We thought, wait a minute, you know, let's ask the audience. He has a well, substantial, he has a substantial audience, so we could get a lot of feedback. So we created this three question this um, survey, and uh, we reached out on Facebook. Now I'm just still waiting for the numbers, but I'm going to um, share all these things on the, in the essay as a practical case study. So basically, what we did, we just created the the survey, 
and we posted it on Facebook. And I saw, you know, like the likes and everything is like pretty good amount of likes. Now I want to see how many people responded and what they said. So he asked, what would you like me to share with you? You know, like this, this, or this, or write down a new idea that you have. And that, that was it. You know, it, it's, it's still these people, that, the people that will respond, are more likely to actually back him from day one because they because commit. They, want, they, they get what they want. They want to see this happening, and they also commit. They spend some minutes, even a few minutes, and they share their opinion, which means that they care. So you're not looking for who's going to buck my trip. You know, you're talking with these very same people, and they're like, yes, I want to give you feedback, which means I do care. You know, so I will spare at least a dollar. So I think that that's a great way of actually involving people and then making them part of the process and giving them what they want. That, that, that is a thing that I believe that can work for any artist, mm -hmm. whether you have an audience of 20 people or an audience of a few thousand people like Yossi does. So, um, so that's quite interesting to include it. Now, I get a lot of notes, and I'm going to share all these things with you. Now, I think there is, we can have, we have some time, like 10 more minutes for a, another question, for the last question. Let me see what this question is going to be. Like, okay, um, in terms of mastermind groups, that is something that has been going around my, my head for quite a while. I've been reading this book um, called Think and Grow Rich, uh, if you're aware of it. Um, I read it before. I'm rereading it because it's a brilliant book, you know, to bring you back on track. And it, stress, it was stressing out a lot the idea of a mastermind. And I think that this is the, the direction that my, our Patreon page is going to take. It's not going to be just a place for research, but it's going to be a place as a mastermind group where everybody can benefit from each other's ideas. What do you think in terms of masterminds? And uh, first of all, do you like the idea? We're going to start again with, uh, with Greg. Do you like the idea? Uh, what do you think about it? Uh, keep in mind, we have 10 minutes for all of us to answer that. Um, do you like the idea? Uh, do you, what, what kind of people do you think should participate in, in this mastermind? And number three, any comments you have on that? Let's go three minutes per person. All right. I love the book Think and Grow Rich. It's a brilliant book, so awesome. Um, I'm in a couple of masterminds, and I think that the most valuable thing about a mastermind is brutally honest feedback based on people who know your goals more intimately than anybody else. So therefore, they can weigh your options and validate whether or not the way in the direction that you are moving towards lines up with your highest goals or not. So I completely think that mastermind is 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 essential to moving forward consistently. So I love that idea, Tommy. I love that idea. All right. It's you. Um, what I've written down is people that know the context. I think that's very important. Uh, the more that people stick with your journey, the more likely they are to know the context and the goals and the vision. And I think this is very important. And and practically, you know, with darker music talks, um, I started it started as a thing, you know, like a personal thing. Right now, it's a, um, a team of six people with more people to join. But basically, these people are attendees that were coming consistently, and they're still coming. And they said, you know, I would like to help you. So eventually, now we're a mastermind group, and we're sharing portions of work. They know the context. That's why I trusted them. Otherwise, I, I wanted to hold the idea dear to myself and not share with others because I'm like, I know what needs to be done. You know, other people cannot do that. I'm the only person that can do that. No, people that know the context yep. can actually help you equally. Okay, thank yep. you, uh, Nim. Uh, your your take on on mastermind groups. Um, what what do you think? Do you have experience on that? And what kind of people do you think should be part of a mastermind group? Well, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by mastermind group. Like, I, I don't have any experience with this. Ma mastermind group is like a group of people. Imagine a table, a round table, with people that have um, knowledge on this very specific subject you're talking about. They're knowledgeable. And you go and you put a, a subject, you know, for discussion, and everybody shares their opinion. People that know the context, they have knowledge, and they know the vision. So everybody starts sharing, like, you know, we could do this. What do you think? I think we could do this because of this. I think we should do go for this direction. And then eventually you crowdsource knowledge. Okay. Well, um, well of course, you have somebody uh, like 
um, filtering this and collating and moderating this, right? Yeah. Um, and, well, I, I think that, you know, many ideas being bounced off of each other um, is, is a brilliant way to go. Um, you know, different perspectives, different aspects, um, you know, different facets need to be expressed. And also, you know, um, one person isn't going to think the same way about something as somebody else. And so, you know, they'll be like, Hey, I I totally hadn't thought of it. I I totally wasn't thinking of it like that. But that is a very very valid point, and um, it it it's that way that a very that a very whole idea can come together, a more complete idea, um, a more well rounded idea. I I totally agree. I think like this is the the way to put it together. It's it it creates a well-rounded idea. Not everybody everybody has knowledge. Everybody has an opinion. You know, an opinion is the cheapest thing you can have. Everybody has one. Uh, but uh, putting it together in words and and finding different aspects of an opinion and picking which direction uh, people are going to take on the subject, I think yeah, it, it, this is a great way to do it. You know, through a mastermind group of people that do care, because I think getting people that care about the vision is the most difficult bit. Getting people to share their opinion, it's something that we've been doing all the time because when we share opinions, we talk about ourselves basically and we like talking about ourselves. So the thing is about having people that understand uh, this vision and, um, and that's what a mastermind group does. Brings together brains, people that understand and they give a shit about what's happening. All right, thank you, uh, Nim. And and one comment from, uh, from Alessandro. Yeah, I think, well, I like to call it Collaborative innovation, which I think is, is, is important, even more important nowadays. It's so hard to innovate in any field, you know, in the music as well. You know, if you're just on your own. Um, so I think uh, working together with people that share or at least know what your what your goal, what your vision, what your background is, is very important. And I believe that in the past, uh, in, you know, this was the case in music because you, you know, all, behind uh, any great band, there, always, there is always at least a great producer, a great mix engineer. But there's a team that you don't see, which is generating, you know, the, the great outcome that you listen to. I think these days, because of the way of producing music has changed, whether because the budgets don't allow any more to have a producer or, uh, you know, a super professional mix engineer, but also because we are changing the way we make music, we need to uh, expand this group so we can still have a producer, we can still have a mix engineer, or the band itself, you know, can be that, can fulfill those roles. But including your audience again into your brainstorm process is, is probably, you know, as we discussed before, very important. So I, I think you know, in music, all it always existed. Um, maybe it's just changing the way we, we, you know, you know. So for me, the most interesting bit is who should participate. Well, again, the audience probably. You know, because we, we had other people involved before, and now we need probably even more people involved in the creative process. Right. Be able to innovate and, you know, make them happy. Um, so that's it. We're just all going down to the fact that we need to have people that care. Not just people that have the knowledge, but people yeah. that care as well. Yeah. Uh, because this way you can connect with the vision yeah. uh, more easily. I believe so. Okay. That, that's nice. I think I've kept a lot of notes here. It's like a page full of notes. Uh, for sure I'm going to share all these things in the description of the video. This is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to transcribe, let's say, the ideas that happen uh, that that uh, are expressed in, in the session and to put them down in the Facebook, uh, in the in the YouTube description. Um, so I, I think that that's a brilliant session, you know. Like we've just created a mastermind group mm, yeah. on feedback, on masterminds. We just had a mastermind group on mastermind. <laughs> that, that is <laughs> nice. Mastermind. Yeah, exactly. And then we're going to have a collaborative feedback on collaboration, uh, on an essay on, on collaboration. That, that's pretty nice. We're, we're doing what we're preaching. Um, okay. Uh, that, that's pretty nice. I think we'll just hit an hour. Uh, let's keep it short and, and, and sweet. You know, we cannot exhaust the topic, obviously. Uh, the more people that would be part of this, uh, the more uh, knowledge we would be able to crowdsource. Hopefully, by sharing the link with you guys, uh, we can have all this information crowdsourced through comments uh, on Medium. So expect for, for this article uh, today or tomorrow, 
Uh, I'll see how much time I have to put it together. Uh, and I'm looking forward to your feedback because this way uh, it's not about my knowledge, you know, being documented. It's about actually having all these people, these 50 people that are uh, uh, the patrons of the page to contribute equally to uh, the research being done. Uh, so thank you, uh, thank you, Nim, James. Uh, thank you, Greg. Thank you, thank you, Alessandro. Uh, let's uh, unmute, unmute yourselves, guys, so we can do make some noise. <laughs> and um, woo! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, thank, thank you very much for participating, um, and all the people that will watch oh. it afterwards. Uh, you can write comments about this. You can share your opinions. And uh, we will be there next month so we can talk about a new exciting topic. Uh, thank you very much. It was nice much to talk to you guys. You too, man. Uh, and thank and you. Guys, please send me an email. Uh, Greg, I have your, um, your details. Uh, James, yeah. please send me your two links that you would like me to share with everybody on Patreon uh, because you're participating in this session. And uh, Alessandro is the same. All right, All right awesome. guys. Thank Thanks, you very guys. Much. Take care. Have a, good, have a great day. But yeah. Cheers. Uh, we'll see you. <laughs>